Hello Jason, I have an iPhone 10 or 10s that is not turning on. I tried to replace the battery and charging port, but it still doesn't turn on. How much would it cost to repair the phone? If it's cheaper, I can send you the motherboard only. Let me know when you can. Thanks. Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really good. Today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 10 or 10s that is sent here because it will not turn on. Now right off the bat there's a couple of things that really stand out to me. The first one is that we do not have any pentalobe screws here. Now something else that is worth raising an eyebrow over is that the screen is not actually all the way on the phone. All right, so before turning this thing on or doing anything else to it, it seems as though it is completely ready to come apart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stab my blade in here and begin popping this thing apart. Anybody wanna place any bets as to what we're gonna find inside of this phone? All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. All right. What? Now what in the name of all things holy happened to that front flex cable so i think i'm just going to go ahead and uh, ignore that you know it does have a brand new screen assembly on it thankfully it doesn't have many screws in it so that'll make taking it apart quite a bit easier now what in the world do we have going on here that is uh profoundly repulsive we've got like a big old drywall screw or something holding that shield on there, sort of. Ooh, that's tight, too. My goodness, that was screwed down on there. Well, hopefully it didn't pull a big chunk of something out with it. Alrighty then, let's see what it looks like under this shield, shall we? Now, without skipping a beat, I am just gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery. So before I make any changes at all, I'm just gonna go right on ahead and see what the DC power supply says. So as you can see, we've got the power supply set to 12 volts. That is not acceptable. Let's go ahead and drop that down to, well, let's just say four volts. That's probably a little bit better. All right, the current is set to 0.9. I'll start out low just in case we got anything crazy going on. So this board is not drawing any power at the initial uh, power connection here. So let's go ahead and let it have maximum current. All right, here we go. Drum roll, please. I'm gonna press the button to boot and one, two, three, boot. It jumps to a very instant one amp of current. I was kind of hoping for a straightforward, easy repair. I am pretty discouraged about the wadded up flex cable, but since this thing is here for motherboard repair, I'm going to be pretending like that flex cable just looks brand new. So we're drawing high current instantly on button press. And what we should get whenever you very first press the button to boot, we should get like you know, 70 to 100 milliamps followed by a pause and then higher current as it proceeds into the boot process. But since this one just jumps straight to one amp, right as very, at the very second you push the button, something's wrong. Something is shorted somewhere. I'm gonna use my microscope as a prop and just let that screen like lean right there like that. And next I'll reach for the trusty thermal camera. I'm doing this before I touch anything because I've got this suspicion that the short might actually be this front flex cable. Here we are looking at this phone with thermal imaging. We've got the power supply on and I'm gonna press the button to boot and one, two, three, boot. Okay, we jump straight to our instant one amp of current. And oh boy, look at, uh, we've got some serious, holy smokes, look at that heat building up. Let's turn the power supply off. And now I'm reasonably confident that our little short circuit problem is not the front flex cable because those light up right away. So let's go ahead and disconnect the power supply. So I wonder where exactly this short is gonna be. It looked like the heat was coming from this area down in here, which you know, that could actually be a racer short. Now, I forgot to show you all just exactly how bad this phone looks. I mean, it has taken a pretty good hit. So I do suspect that there is something that's going to be broken here. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everything from the board, which you know, it could have been that actual screen assembly itself causing this, but I really don't think so. So now the only thing that I have hooked up is the actual power button. I'm gonna go ahead and snake our DC power supply back up in here again. Somewhere right around there. There we go. All right, now with everything disconnected from the board, I'm gonna press the button to boot. And one, two, three, boot. 
an instant one amp of current. So we still have a short. And now that I know that this is very much likely to be a logic board short, I will go ahead and remove the board because we don't need that in the housing no more now, do we? All right, so now I've got the board out of this thing and it looks just like an ordinary iPhone 10 logic board. Now, before I spend any more time troubleshooting, I'm just gonna give it a good visual inspection under the microscope. Sometimes that can actually be a bit faster. Uh, we got some carnage going on down here. We've got a little bit of a plastic lippy thing broken off of the SIM card tray reader thing. That's okay. We're going to pretend like that is not broken. And then, boy, somebody has really, they've had a bit of trouble with this thing. If we get in down here and we look at this touch connector, it's sort of been like smooshed out some. It's not enough to keep it from being functional, but I mean... It's pretty close, so we're just going to go ahead and fix that properly. And then if we look at these pins over here, we'll see that that pin there is really probably just not capable of working. So, I mean, if I were, hypothetically speaking, able to get this board to power up, it's going to have trouble with touch, maybe, because these pins are not, not sticking out. So I'm going to go ahead and berth us a new pin here. As you can see, when I push on this, a new pin is born. It just comes out of the plastic. Okay, I know, I know I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. Is there anything here visibly that would keep this board from powering on? The heat signatures that I seen coming out of the FLIR camera were more isolated to here, but a common point of failure on these boards is right here along NAND. Uh, these caps here, these things are all very prone to failure. And it's normally due to liquid damage, but I would imagine it could happen just from impact too. So, you know, we just want to kind of buzz down through here and look at uh, these. Is that, uh, is that cap burnt? Or is it just the way the underfill is? Oh, look, and we actually have evidence of pry tool over here, right? On NAND? Let's see. Let me readjust my microscope so I can see that into the board a little bit better. Now looking at this row of caps here from the end, oh yeah, I'm betting that this winds up being what the problem is. It doesn't look like uh, it's liquid damaged how they typically are. It has like a gouge or a nick in the side of it. Let's see if it's shorted. So for this, I'm gonna use my multimeter. I don't get enough chances to thank uh, Joseph, the guy that is behind this one eye ocular that helps me to see all these readings in my left eye. I just, I really appreciate this thing. If you're interested in the one eye ocular, I'm gonna leave a description in the link below. We'll set the meter to diode mode. I'm gonna flake off just the little bit of underfill here. It certainly looks blacker than it should be. Okay, that's good enough. Now, I don't recall exactly which side of that little cap is ground, so I'm just going to check both sides. So here I've got my red probe on ground, and I'm going to use my black probe to do the probing. And I'll just check the outside of that first. I'm getting a 0.004 in diode that is directly shorted to ground on that side. And then if we check this side here, I'm also getting a 0.004, a direct short to ground. So without doing any like real troubleshooting, just glancing over this board, I think that this is gonna wind up being the problem. So then let's just have a look at that with flex board view and see exactly which line that is. That is C2647. That line, it's actually PP1V8IO. And as you can see, it is hooked all stinking over the place. So this is a cap that whenever I find it shorted and it is just one cap and there's not like any other reason to do anything else to this board, I properly remove it. So for the sake of this repair, the board, my sanity, and to increase my odds of a successful repair, I'm going to properly remove that capacitor. There we go. And now to make it look like I have done more work than I really have, I'm gonna be replacing this capacitor with ceramic cap in a tube. That's right, folks, ceramic cap in a tube. Get yours now for $49.99, $9.95. So I'll just take a tiny little blob of this stuff. 
and we're going to properly replace this capacitor with it. There we go. And then we'll just let that harden up with some strong UV light and we'll be right back. I can't believe I took the board out of the housing for this repair. Alrighty then. So then, this thing is pretty well cured up. Since I am massively confident, shit. Since I am massively confident that that was indeed the problem, I'm gonna go ahead and slip this back into the housing. Oh, and look here, I might have actually been wrong about the tool slippage. Look at what we've got going on right down here inside the housing, fellers. We have got some crystal clear liquid damage, and look where that's at. It is actually right diagonal next to the little capacitor here that I replaced. All right, so let's just get everything plugged back in here and see how this phone behaves. I'm reasonably sure it is going to be fine now. Honestly, I did not need to take the board out for this. And looking closer, I do think this may have been more likely to be liquid damage. I really don't want to plug that front flex cable in. I mean, really don't want to plug it in. So I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. We've got the power supply on the screen. I'm going to turn the power supply on and I'm going to press the button to boot in one, two, three. But we are getting 100 milliamps, looking a little better. Apple logo. Come on, baby, let's see you boot. All right, we are up and running to a lock screen here. I'm gonna go ahead and tension these battery data pins because it's very common for those to get recessed. And then once the customer gets it back, they will say, hey, you sent this phone back, but it restarts every three minutes. And it's no longer charging the battery properly. All right, so I'm just going to hook up their battery. We're going to go ahead and connect a charger and then just see what we are drawing for charging current. It looks like uh, 600 milliamps. Come on, baby. I want to see an amp or more, right? It is sitting on an Apple logo, so that's a good sign. Up to one and a half amps of current here. That's actually good. Two amps of current. All right, this phone is back up and running. It is charging the battery. And you know, I don't have a face ID error. I also don't have a passcode, but what if, what if I cover the ambient light sensor and light the screen? Ambient light does not seem to be working. That's not really a surprise. That could be an issue with the screen, this flex cable. I'm gonna leave it just like it is for now. I'm still drawing a nice one and a half amps of charging current. And as far as the logic board repair, that is pretty much the end of the road for me. I do have some concerns here about this front flex cable, but uh, this was sent here by a repair shop and I believe they are intending on fixing the other things here by themselves. So I'll just make sure they're aware of it. And um, boy, am I glad to have an easy one. So anyways, that is it for this one. I really thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Have a good day.